everybody, this is part four of my building this collection. Part three, I had gotten four new Call the Cot winners. And same deal with this one that I'm making now. It's been a little while. It's starting to get harder to find. I, uh, the ones that I got last time, I've been keeping an eye on for a while. These were, really had to dig for these. Um, one that seemed to be quite difficult to find overall is uh, the first one I purchased here for this set, which is uh, Ox Cart Man. This is the 1980 winner. Um, you may recall that I'm starting off in the 80s, since that's when I first became interested in uh, illustrated books. Um, there's been several good copies, but I'm very anal about wanting it without the sticker, without the metal. Um, I want it just like it came out of the press. I've also gotten a little more lenient on condition um, than I used to be because I started to realize that it was going to take me absolutely forever uh, to finish. This is a really beautiful book. Um, Donald Hall was, uh, I believe, U.S. Poet Laureate for a while. Barbara Cooney is a very well-known illustrator. I believe she won another called the Cot earlier, although I don't remember off the top of my head. Um, this book is, it's not bad inside condition-wise, but um, it's definitely not one of the best ones that I have. You can see she has a personalized inscription in 1980, the year that won the Call the Cot, and books from 1979, first printing. I don't know who Natasha Tarbox is. I generally don't care about the personalized inscription, um, meaning it's fine from fine with me that it's personalized. I just want as much of the writing as possible. And this is actually pretty damn good. You can see it's got the price intact. Uh, the top is, is really fine. It's all complete. There's no pieces missing. There is a little bit of a closed tear in the bottom left. Um, a little bit worse than a closed tear actually, but and there's a definite closed tear in the upper left, but but really, that's pretty damn good. I mean, you're, you're starting to talk about 35 years old now, um, and it's, for how old it is, I was pretty satisfied with it. Um, one thing I've noticed, and you'll see, is that uh, I've started to find some things sold by people who don't necessarily usually sell uh, these kind of books, they're kind of maybe just getting into it now. And um, one problem with that, as you'll see in the next one, is uh, that they're not getting them uh, covered in Mylar. Um, this particular seller that was selling this, I don't know how they came about it, but uh, Al Moon is the 1988 winner by Jane Yolen, illustrated by John Schoner. Um, I don't know how in the world uh, he came about this. It's an extremely rare first printing to find. You'll rarely see it up for sale. With the dust jacket, most of the time you find this book, it uh, has the um, it has no jacket at all, and it'll it's just the the uh, reinforced boards. Um, it's almost, I've never actually seen it. until I got this. I had never seen it without the metal because I literally had never seen one for sale. Um, this guy. I'm actually, I'm sorry, this wasn't a, the textbook guy. This was someone else who, just a normal bookstore. Um, and they kind of priced it pretty low on top of that. Um, not really realizing what they had, I don't think. Um, this is an inscription to, uh, for Peter Sloat for, to a scrivener from a scribbler. Uh, and he signed it in 89, the year uh, after it won. Um, I don't know who Peter Sloat is. I, mean, I don't know. They might have sold it to this... Uh, the guy that I bought it from, I don't know. But the issue point for this one is, um, it says first impression stated right there. And that's the only indication that I know of. Plus the fact that it was his gift. Um, probably means that he got it from his, his freebie copies. Um, really beautiful book, very well known. Um, 
condition wise this one has some issues um, again at first glance it looks great it's not price clipped it's complete um, there's a little bump in the bottom there is a A little partial tear on the top, but it's complete. Um, again, I'm being a little more lenient these days because I realized I would pretty much never find anything if I was waiting for a perfect. But all in all, really good. The only problem is that I, I need, I don't have any materials to do my lash stuff because I'm so used to places already doing it for me. And it's kind of a pain and um, you kind of need one of those uh, big paper cutter things to cut the mylar I think so I'm gonna have to invest in one because I don't want it to be out of a sleeve for too long um, probably the biggest home run of this batch is the 1989 winner song and dance man uh, illustrated by Stephen Gamel Gamel I, I forget how to pronounce that but um, I picked this one up from a very expensive seller and I was actually trying to not pay anywhere near this much um, I'll go over these prices in a bit, but um, I got more and more antsy about it. It was just sitting there and I was thinking someone's going to get it at some point because it is um, in the last 30 or so years, I believe this is the rarest first printing to find of the last since the 1980 to present. Um, if you look at the uh, the guy who did this sort of definitive picture book um, price list, um, for for Caldecott winners, this I'm pretty sure this is the one that he thought was most expensive to find in this sort of condition. Um, nice blue end papers. This is signed by Stephen Gamel. Also, I hadn't really seen one signed before. Um, this book is in pristine, basically as new condition in Mylar. It's probably been in Mylar since the very beginning, as far as I can tell. Um, not price clipped. And first printing in the back, uh, published by Knox. So, that rounds out the decade and um, kind of the last work in progress here. I know I've talked about it a lot. Um, I finally found a pretty much pristine copy of Jumanji. Now you'll notice that this one's also not in a Mylar sleeve. Um, this is the one that I bought from a guy who mostly sold textbooks um, and you know older stuff that wouldn't be in Mylar at all. Um, but I guess he's starting to do some children's books and he happened upon a collection of first editions of various types and um, I actually was kind of concerned that this might not even be a real jacket but I actually compared it against a real one and it's it's definitely real. Um, I thought it might be like a facsimile jacket. Um, not price clipped. This is, looks pretty much unread as far as I can tell. Um, 1981, Chris Van Allsburg. You know, uh, if you've seen the other videos, you'd know that I collect him quite seriously. And I have pretty much all his other major books, first edition signed. So this is a first edition. Now you'll notice I didn't show a signature because it's not signed. So what happened here was that um, I don't know if he's gonna make another book. I'm not counting on it. Um, I'm not counting on it. So uh, there's going to be another Jumanji movie coming out. I think the guy's rolling in money at this time. Um, he's getting older now, slowing down. He's done fewer books in recent years. I don't know if he's going to do another book, or if he does, I don't know if he's going to do another signing. But I did see that he is doing some signings uh, this year for the 30th anniversary of Polar Express uh, because the book came out, I believe, around Christmas 1985. Um, so that's coming up in November next month. So I managed to finagle a way to get this book signed during his book signing tour. So once I found that out, it had been that's one of the only things that had been keeping me from ordering this unsigned copy is, is 
you know, all, all the other ones I have, I have signed. Um, but this one, I will get signed shortly. Pristine. Um, so, I've been waiting a long time for this one. Um, it's actually, I'm, I'm already like not being careful enough with it here. Um, but it'll, it'll, uh, it'll soothe down. Um, anyway, that is the four that I have picked up. Um, if you've been keeping track, you'll see I have Oxcartman 80. I have Fables 81 right here. I showed it last time. We got Jumanji 82. I've got Shadow and Glorious Flight, 83-84, I have Polar Express, 86, I have Hey Owl, 87, I have Owl Moon, and Song of Dance Man, 88-89. So that leaves 85, which is um, St. George and the Dragon, Trina Sharp Hyman. Um, she's passed away. Uh, that means, you know, the, unfortunately, that means that she can't sign books anymore, so... Um, it goes without saying, so I need to pick that up signed. I'm having some trouble finding, you know, a particularly great copy of it. Um, but, I haven't given up. So, next time, uh, by the time I do another video, I will have decided which, um, error to collect next, whether to kind of do the easy pickings and do 90s to present, or um, work a little bit harder and do the 70s. I've had a lot of trouble finding 70s books, and obviously it only gets harder as you go older, not to mention more expensive. Um, I've been trying to mention what I get these for just to give people an idea if they want to go about it. Um, Jumanji, unsigned, uh, was uh, $460. Uh, the Al Moon was $375. Great, great deal considering how rare it seems to be. The Song of Dance Man was not at all a good price for uh, $760 or so. And the uh, um, Oxcart Man was 600 So that's the oldest one. Not too surprising. Wish I hadn't quite spent that much, but what are you going to do? Anyway, next time, hopefully it'll be a few more from either the 70s or later. If I go later, I'm probably going to work much quicker. Um, a lot of the ones from the 90s and 2000s to start only to be a couple hundred dollars, 200 hundred dollars. So it'll be a lot easier to continue. But that's it for now, and uh, see you next time.